Family Theatre presents Jane Powell and J. Carol Nash. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theatre, presents The Fledgling, starring Jane Powell. To introduce the drama, here is your host, J. Carol Nash. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. You know, family theater's only purpose is to urge everyone to pray, to pray together as a family, because family theater is convinced that only by this means can family happiness be guaranteed. And certainly this, this needn't be a stern and, and solemn thing to do like, like some sort of a nervous duty, but, but it's a gay and, and homey custom in the name of a kind father who wants all his children, especially in families, to be happy. And that's the idea. And now sit back and, and laugh with us as we bring you our comedy, The Fledgling, starring lovely Jane Powell. Captain Briggs? Yeah? What can I do for you? I'm Jim Rinell, FBI. Oh, yeah. We were wondering when you'd show up. This is my co-pilot, Ed Lawrence. Hi. Glad to know you, Mr. Renault. You're going to be taking that London plane out tonight with us? Unless I break a leg. What's all the hush-hush about? Oh, it's about one of the passengers going out on your flight. Let's go and dispatch his office where we can talk, huh? Right. Okay. Now, tell me, have either of you seen the passenger list for the London flight tonight? Not yet. We heard it wasn't very big. Oh, no, it isn't. You'll be carrying nine people, including me. Now, we think we've got a hold of something concerning one of your passengers. Uh, you know what the government means when it says that a person is a bad security risk? Means maybe they're disloyal? Working for another government? Uh, Captain Griggs came closest. The key word is maybe. Just maybe they're disloyal. Maybe they're working for another government. But the maybe's big enough so that you wouldn't want him to get a hold of any information that another government, an unfriendly government, could use. And we've got a passenger like that aboard tonight? We think you have. Where do we come in? Well, you come in in case something goes wrong, which is unlikely, but we want to cover all the bases. How do you mean, goes wrong? Well, the whole reason for my going along in this flight is to point out this passenger to a uh, British security man who'll be waiting when we land at Croydon Airport in London. And then my job's done, and he takes up the trail. Sounds simple enough. Yeah, it is, but that's uh, probably for me. Hello, Renella speaking. Yeah. No, 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 thanks. I'll take the call out there. I'll be right out. Is who? Captain Briggs? Yeah, he's here. Hold on just a minute. For you, Captain, information desk, something about your stewardess. I've got a call waiting for me on one of the pay phones out in the terminal. I'll be right back. Hello, Captain Griggs. She's got what? Holy cat. What's the matter, Cap? Sally Connors went to the hospital half an hour ago, appendicitis. Oh, no. Well, how's she doing? Sure. Sure, well, that's great, yeah, but... Yeah, well, look, Muriel, we need a stewardess to replace her. The flight takes off in less than an hour. Honey, I don't care who you get. Well, then get one of the trainees. Sure, anyone. Just get her and tell her to hurry. Hello? Uh, I'm Jane Wiley. What? Tonight? Why, well, well, of, of course, my, my goodness, yes. Flight number seven. Yes. Oh, yes, I'll hurry. Y yes, goodbye. Margie, Margie. What's the matter, Janie? It's happened, Margie. Well, I got my first flight out tonight. Oh, that's swell, honey. Where to? Oh, well, I don't know. Amarillo, I guess. They usually to Amarillo, but, but I've got to hurry. My first flight. Oh, well, take it easy, Janie. Take it easy. It's just a training flight. I know, but I, I, somehow I, I have a feeling it's, it's going to be very special. <laughs> Ten minutes, we'll take off. I don't get it, Eddie. You didn't see Renella anywhere in the terminal? No, Cap. What's more, I couldn't find anyone who had seen him since he left us in the dispatcher's office. Well, I guess it's possible he might want to keep out of sight until right before we take off. Maybe. But I'd give a lot to know who it was that called him on the phone. I've been wondering about that myself. Could have been a trap, Yoo but... yoo -hoo. Flight seven? What in the name of... Are you flight seven? Am I late? Oh, I'm not late, am I? Oh, you're the stewardess replacing Sally Connors. Oh, 
I didn't know I was replacing anyone, but but if this is Flight 7... It I'm... is, it is. I'm Captain Griggs, and this is co-pilot Lawrence. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? I'm Jane Wiley, and this is my very first... Glad to know you. We take off in ten minutes. You'd better get up on the ramp. Oh, the ramp. Oh, oh yes, Commodore. Captain, you uh, got a copy of the passenger list? Uh, yes, the passenger list. I mean, no, no, I don't. Uh, uh, have a copy, I mean. Here, Dollface, take my copy. Oh, thank you, thank you. But I want it back when we get to London. London? <laughs> oh, you are a scream. Is that very far from Amarillo? <laughs> oh, brother, what they've dealt us this time. You better get up on the ramp, Miss Wiley. The passengers will be getting aboard in a minute. Uh, right now? Oh, I'm so thrilled. Oh, I can't tell you how thrilled I am. Yeah, it's breathtaking. Look, we want you to do something. Anything. Oh, anything. There's a name on that passenger list. Renella. Mr. Renella. We want you to come up front and let us know as soon as he gets aboard. Ranella, up front. As soon as he gets aboard. Yes, yes. And, and I'll go up on the ramp right now, and don't you worry about a thing. Okay, if you say so. Oh, what a night for flying. Just look at those stars. Oh, Texas, here we come. <laughs> Seven a tower, seven a tower, standing by, standing by, over. Still no news from little Miss Muffet. I guess Ranella didn't make it after all. I better go back and make sure. Maybe the guy he's following didn't show up either. Maybe. Don't be too long. I won't. Now, there's nothing to be nervous about, nothing at all. Everyone just lean back and enjoy himself. And if you like sleeping, go ahead and sleep. And if you feel like reading, just go ahead and read. And Miss can... Wiley. Yes? Oh, oh co-pilot Lawrence. This is our co-pilot, everyone. Well, oh. <laughs> Hi, folks. He takes over in case anything should happen to the captain. Now, for instance, if the captain should fall asleep at the controls or anything Miss like Wiley. that. Miss Wiley. Uh, will you excuse us just a minute, folks? I want to talk to you. Come in the back of the plane. Did I say something wrong? Never mind. Now, what about Mr. Ranella? He didn't show up? No. All right, look, we're taking off in a few minutes. Come up front as soon as you can after we're airborne, huh? I'll be happy to, just happy to. Uh, shall I bring along anything? Magazines, gum? No, no, don't bring anything. Just your own sweet, simple self. Oh, co-pilot. And don't forget, will you? It's important. Uh, oh, stewardess. Oh, yes, Miss uh, uh, Robinson, isn't it? Mm, that's right. Would you mind helping me with the seat belt? It seems to be stuck. Oh, of course, of course. They're really quite simple. You see, you first pull... <coughs> you, you pull this. <gasps> well, just a minute, I'll get a better grip. Oh, I'm sorry to be all this bother. No bother at all. That's what I'm here for. To help the passengers with the little things like... This. Oh, oh, boy. <coughs> Oh, my feet! Oh, oh, no. You smashed me in the face! Oh, Mr. Mecklen, I'm so sorry. It, it slipped the seatbelt. Oh, can you ever forgive me? Well, excuse me, please. In the face of her. It's my fault, sir. This young lady was just trying to help oh, me. Oh, yeah, and helping she smashes in the passengers like that. Oh, if there was something I could do to prove how sorry I am. I know. When we get to Amarillo, hmm? won't you let me buy you a taxi ride or something? Amarillo? Oh, I am not to Amarillo. Amarillo, Texas. Don't you go that far? No, excuse me, please. I am to Rome. All I want is please, no more belts in the face, please, and goodbye, thank you. Rome? Well, there isn't any Rome in Texas. Yeah, well, I am not to Texas. I am to Italy, where there is a Rome right in the middle. Italy? Well, this plane isn't going to Italy. Oh, miss, don't you know that this is a flight to Europe? Europe? I'm not going that way. London, Paris. Oh, I'm afraid it's too late now, dear. We're underway. Oh, underway? Oh, my. Well, uh, fasten your seatbelts. We're taking off, everyone. Fasten your seatbelts. Uh, here, Mr. Mecklen, let me... Oh, help. no. Make your distance, please. Uh, I am not for seatbelts either, especially, again, in the face. Oh. Well, here, here we go, everyone. Up, up, up to Europe. Oh, look, Ed, we're a couple of pilots, not detectives. And even if we were detectives, don't tell me that noodle brain stewardess could be any help to us. But, Cap, we've got to use her. Ranella missed the plane. All the other eight passengers are aboard. That means the guy he was supposed to be following is aboard. Oh. So we'll have to keep an eye on the passengers. I mean, Janie the stewardess will. Maybe she'll see something. You bet she will. I know her kind. 
They see snakes in the geranium bed, mice in the pantry, whatever you want, they see it. But Cap, she's all we've got this trip. We have to take a chance on her. All right, all right, let her in, let her in. I guess she can't do any more than ruin the airline. You'll see, she's a good kid. She's just high-spirited. You wanted to see me, co-pilot? Good grief, get her in here, close the door. Janie, what's the matter? We're going the wrong way. If this is an example of your friend's high spirits, we'd better be careful not to depress her. I thought this was a training flight. Well, I guess it is for you. But I can't fly over the ocean. I get seasick. Look, Janie, there's no difference between flying over land and flying over water, not at this altitude. And you love Europe. Have you ever been there before? No. Oh, it's beautiful this time of year. Yes, but, but so is Amarillo. All right. I tell you what we'll do. When we get back to New York, Captain Griggs and I will see that your next assignment is on a flight south to Amarillo. Yeah, maybe even as far south as Little America. Well, it was, it was mostly the shock that upset me, I guess, if I'd only been told. Yeah, sure, we know. And now that you have been told, there's... Well, there's something else we want to tell you, because we need your help. Don't we, Captain? Okay, okay. All right, Janie. What we're letting you in on is very confidential. Oh, I won't breathe a word of it. Now, don't get overly excited. You don't have to worry about me, co-pilot. Good. Now, just let this sink in for a minute. Don't try to say anything. You ready? Ready. There's a passenger on this plane mm -hmm. that our government suspects of being a foreign agent. <gasps> a foreign agent? <gasps> you, mean, you mean like a spy on, on this plane? She sure took it like a little soldier. Oh, a spy? A spy? Well, we'll have to arrest him. Shh. That's just the point. We can't arrest him because we don't know who he is. Well, what's the difference who he is? If he's a spy, he ought to be arrested. That's what we're trying to tell you. We don't know who he is, so how can we arrest him? But if you don't know who he is, how do you know he's a spy? We don't know he's a spy for certain. We just suspect that he is. You suspect that who is? We don't know. That's the problem. Look, let's start over. Mr. Ranella, the man who missed the flight, Maybe he was a spy. Will you let me finish, please? Mr. Ranella, far from being a spy, is with the Federal Bureau of Investigation. A G-man? A G-man. No. I bet he wouldn't have missed this flight if he'd known there was a spy aboard. No. <laughs> he did know there was a spy aboard. And while I'm at it, Janie, the person we're looking for is called a security risk, not a spy. Why, well, I thought a security risk was, was someone a bank wouldn't lend money to. That, too. That, too. Janie. This is a different kind of security risk. It means they might be a spy, but no one's sure. The main point is we've got to find out which one of the passengers Rinella was following. And that's where you I know, help. I know. It's Mr. Mecklin. See? Just like that. Mr. Mecklin, he's the one. I never saw such a spy. Who's Mecklin? What did I tell you? Snakes in the geranium bed? He even carries a black briefcase. Mecklin's a cheese salesman. He takes this flight once a week. He's the one, Mr. Mecklin. What a spy. Look, I happen to know that Macklin's a respectable businessman. Admit it, though, Cap. He's an ideal business to double as a contact man. Say, maybe he's got something in his luggage that'd give him away. Or in his black briefcase. All spies have something in their black briefcases. Eddie, this is the craziest idea I ever heard of. Cap, look at it this way. What if it turns out something really serious happened to Ranella? You can't tell me it was done without the knowledge of the person he was following on this plane which makes said person an accomplice before the fact. I curse the day you quit law school. Legally, we're obligated to investigate Mencken. Co-pilot, I'm making you a present of this mess. You and Miss Counter Espionage of 1952 can handle it any way you want. But if anything, you hear me, anything goes wrong, I'll tell the authorities you're a couple of stowaways that I never even saw before. Janie? Yes? I see Mecklin's still awake. He hasn't dropped off once. It'll be daylight in another hour or so. It's too bad he's not sitting on the aisle. Mm hmm You know, I was thinking, I could walk up very quietly and conk him. No, Janie, for Pete's sake, no. Well, he'd never know who did it. I'm telling you, no. I wonder if there's any way we're getting to change seats with Miss Robinson. Who? Miss Robinson, the lady sitting next to him. Yeah, that might be an angle. If I could just get my hands on that briefcase of his. Well, we can't do anything while he's awake. 
I've got to get up front again. Make a little coffee, will you, Janie? Sure. And, and don't take any chances. I wouldn't want anything to happen to you. You wouldn't? I should say not. Well, my, my gracious co-pilot. Uh, Edward. Co-pilot Edward. Just plain Edward. Forget the co-pilot. Forget the co-pilot? Oh, no, Edward. I, I couldn't do that. Well, say, I... Uh, <clears throat> I had better go forward now. I'll see you later, Janie. I like coffee, I like tea. I like the co-pilot and he likes me. Uh, excuse me, please. Oh. Oh. Uh, please, no smashing, please, huh? Oh, Mr. Mecklen, mm. I, I didn't see you in the dark. Yeah, but I... <laughs> I ask, uh, please, a favor. You, you have a pill for sleeping. I could not sleep. Uh, a pill? Yeah, uh, and for in my head also. <laughs> like five hammers pounding at the same time. I, I could not sleep. Well, uh, uh, you sit right down here in oh, my seat, Mr. Mecklen. I'm warming up some milk. No, no, please, please. I, I am not for milk. <laughs> I am for a sleepy pill. Oh, uh, well, yes, uh, y yes, of course, but, but, yeah. but I'll have to go up front and ah. get one from the, uh, the front, yeah. Uh, yeah, from, from the pilots. Okay. They have all the sleeping pills. You wait right here, and I'll be right back. <laughs> also, please uh, bring for my head the pill, huh? Oh, yes, yes, an aspirin, <laughs> I will. Oh, his seat's right along here. If, if I can just grab his briefcase for a few moments. Huh? Uh, is there anything wrong, Miss Wiley? <gasps> oh, oh, Miss Robinson, you're awake. Oh, I felt you leaning over me. Where's Mr. Mecklen? Oh, Miss Robinson, I, you've got to trust me. I'll explain everything later. We think Mr. Mecklen's an agent for a foreign government, and a man from the FBI was supposed to be following him on this flight, but something happened to him, and I'm sure I can prove Mr. Mecklen's an agent for a foreign government if, if I can just look through his briefcase. Good heavens, are you sure of what you're saying? Oh, I, I'll, I know in a minute. Please hand me that briefcase, please. What? Well, oh, here. Oh, thank you. I'll be right back, right back. Be careful, dear, be careful. I've got it. I've got it. Janie. Close the door. Close the door. I've got it. Got what? Mecklen's briefcase. Holy smoke. Is he asleep? No, he's back by the buffet waiting for a sleeping pill. Let's take a look inside quick. You've got sleeping pills back there. Well, of course I have. I just used coming up here as an excuse to pass a seat and grab the briefcase. Mm, you better look fast, Eddie, if he comes back to his seat before she returns. I'm hurrying case. here. Here's some papers. Yeah, I'll look them over. You keep digging. What's that? Some kind of a package. Nothing here. These are sales reports. What have you got? I don't know. It's, it's... Oh, be careful. Please be careful. Something wrapped in brown paper. About six inches square, two inches deep. Don't squeeze it for Pete's sake. You think we ought to open it? It might go off. Looks harmless enough. Will you don't jiggle it, hey? What are we going to do? I say we ought to keep it up here in front with us. We can turn it over to the authorities when we get to England. If we get to England. But what about Mr. Mecklen? You take the briefcase back to his seat. Don't say anything. We'll let him make the next move. All right. Give it to me. All right. Here. And keep your chin up, honey. Oh, Eddie. Eddie, don't you try to open up that thing. Don't worry, we won't. Now get going. And be careful. Be careful. Yes, indeed. Careful. Be careful. We return the briefcase. Miss Wiley, is everything all right? Uh, yes, no. Uh, I, I think so. Oh, here, Miss Robinson. Put this briefcase back on his seat. Huh? Did you find what you were looking for? Oh, well, I think so. I, I mean, I hope not. I, I, I'll tell you later, please. Uh, did Mr. Mecklen... No, he hasn't come back yet. Oh, thank heavens. I'll tell you all about it later. I have to go now. If I can help in any way. Oh, thanks. I'll let you know. Oh, he's still by the buffet. He's still there. Yeah. <laughs> so it's now for my head the sleepy pill you have it, huh? A sleepy pill? Mm. Oh, oh, yes, yes, I have them. Uh, I have them here all the time, Mr. Mecklen. Oh, so here? <laughs> Here, where? Uh, here, where? Um, mm. oh, 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 here in the cabinet here. Oh, well, that's nice. <laughs> oh, that's a nice little bottle. Oh, that's fine, fine. Yeah. Here you are. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, while you were gone, I, um, <laughs> well, I, I, I smelled the hot milk on the cooker. <laughs> it uh, smells good on the cooker. <laughs> Why would you like a cup of hot milk? Yeah, I would like it, please. <laughs> uh, also, uh, I should uh, make apologize for my outshouting when you uh, smash me in the face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't have to apologize for that. Well, no, but I think about it, and I, I think it uh, was not a smash on purpose. <laughs> oh, of course it wasn't, Mr. Macklin. <laughs> well, so I think that I should not outshout because uh, anyone can make an accident, so I want to be apologized for it. <laughs> Why, certainly. And I'm terribly sorry about it, too. Oh, that's nice. Well, that's fine. <laughs> Ooh. 
I just think of an idea. Yeah, will you wait when I get it? Huh? Oh, Mr. Mecklin, where are you going? Oh, just right here on my seat. I, I have something. What? Yeah, right here inside my briefcase. Your briefcase? Yeah, well, I carry always inside something for that. <gasps> oh, look, it's not here. What? Gone, my sandwiches. Sandwiches? Two cheeses gone, Limburg and Swiss. I have been stolen. Oh, Mr. Mecklin, please calm yourself. I'm pumpernickel. Why, why, there must be some mistake. Oh, no. I... Well, speak up, everybody. Who is the cheese dealer? Oh, Mr. Mecklin. What's the matter? What's going on back here? Oh, Eddie. Do you know what happened? A stealer stole my sandwiches. Two cheeses. Your sandwiches? Limburger and Swiss. He had them in his briefcase. Yeah, well, stop the plane. You, you mean he had them? In oh. his briefcase. Yeah, but I know what. We find out who smells for the Limburger and that's the stealer. Oh, for heaven's sake. Well, I'm sure we'll find your sandwiches, Mr. Oh, Mecklen. Well, of course, they must be around here somewhere. Mm. So, first a belt on the face and then it is gone. Two sandwiches. Who would steal that? Who? I question that. Why, yeah. Uh, Oh, why, maybe it was a mouse. A mouse? 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 No, no, no. Miss Wiley! Miss Wiley! Miss Wiley! Janie, it's not your fault. You did your best. Oh, but I was so sure Mr. Mecklen was a foreign agent, Captain. No, no, Janie, no tears. We're going to be setting down in London in a minute. I'll come back to you as soon as we land. Oh, all right, Eddie. Well, we're almost there, everyone. Almost to London. London, England. Now, don't forget to visit the House of Commons and see the Thames. Or Westminster Abbey and see the tombs. <laughs> ah, there we are. On the ground again. Pulling right up the runway. In a moment, you can loosen your seat belts. In a moment. All right. Now you can. Now you can. Oh, here, Miss Robinson, let me help you with that oh, belt. I'm afraid it does seem to be stuck again. Here, here, I'll loosen it. <laughs> please, you don't. Please smash me in the face again, huh? Please. No, no, Mr. Mecklen. Just remain seated. <laughs> if I could just pull this through. Oh, I am sorry to be such a nuisance. <laughs> no, no, Miss Robinson. Compared to most of my problems on this flight, this is very little. Uh, it's a you very little one. You never did find the person Mr. Ranella was following? Uh, no, we, we we tried everything, but... Mr. Who? Oh, oh, again! My face! Oh, that makes two smashes in the face. Did who, who did you ask me about? Why, that uh, FBI man you said was calling Mr. Mecklen. Two belts in the face, one for each cheese sandwich, huh? I didn't tell you his name. I never said it was Mr. Manella. Yes, you did. You I said didn't, that... not once. You! It must be you they're after. You're crazy. I don't know what you're talking about. Jenny, we just got word from the tower. New York phoned that Ranella's okay. Eddie, Captain Griggs, I found her. It's Miss Robinson. What's going on here? But this poor girl's hysterical. Eddie, Eddie, back in New York, did Mr. Ranella tell you it was a man he was following? Did he say that for sure it was a man? Well, I... Come to think of it... By golly, that's right. All Ranella said was a passenger. <laughs> well, it's her, Miss Robinson. She knew Ranella's name, and I didn't mention it to her. I know I didn't. Yeah, and you didn't smash her either in the face like me. I'm warning you people, you're making a big mistake. You can't prove a thing, not a thing. We'll see about that, Miss Robinson. As captain of the ship, I'm placing you under arrest. Come on. My loyal have something to say about this. Yeah, and it better be good. I'll get a hold of you two later. Uh, excuse me, please, but uh, I also am for a judge. Oh, Mr. Mecklen, you mustn't. I, I am so sorry. After all, it was an accident, Mr. Mecklen. Yeah, well, also, too much once was an accident, and a judge could settle it. I hear some places, a law in the airlines, but says that no lady helpers are married, huh? That's right. Stewardesses cannot be married. Mm. In your case, that's a wonderful rule, I think. Yeah. You know, I watch you how you make what I call it uh, baby faces on each other all over the trip. Yeah. Please accept the proposal. Proposal? Why, why Eddie hasn't proposed to me. Please propose to her. Why, I... Well... Will you? I mean, would you, Janie? She accepts. Oh, I, of course I do, Eddie. Yeah. <laughs> and I accept on behalf of the airline and the passengers her resignation. <laughs> oh, now, well, like I told you, you are all at last for the judge. <laughs> Excuse me, please. <laughs> Ah, 
Well, this is Jay Carroll Nash again to thank on behalf of Family Theatre, Jane Powell, and the rest of this wonderful cast. In fact, I've been authorized by Family Theatre to say that without the constant devotion of Hollywood stars and people, a program such as this would be impossible. And they want me to say thanks to Jane, to you, and all the stars and players. Oh, and you're one of them too, Carol. As I recall it, you've been on Family Theatre 11 times yourself. Well, to tell the truth, Jane, I'm a great fan of Family Theatre. Oh, so am I. But I mean, I listen to it every chance I get. Mm, I do too. I think we're all, as you say, devoted to it. And the one thing I like is that the whole family can listen. Well, of course, that's why it's called family theater. There, there's nothing controversial. Sometimes they give us a comedy, sometimes a drama, or even a melodrama. They've done some fine historical things, too. I like the variety. Well, that's, that's because of the variety of the players, Jane. And uh, some do one thing, some another. For instance, with this mustache, I couldn't possibly play a pretty airline hostess, oh. could I? <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't do your wonderful Latin characterizations. But I do see what you mean. The program varies from star to star. Jane, it, it goes beyond the stars. Uh, what would be called a commercial, for instance, on another program with a, with a product to push. Of course, Family Theater has a product to push. That product is Family Prayer. The whole reason for this program, which never preaches during the drama, which doesn't even conceal a message, is nevertheless to urge folks to pray, to pray together as families. I, I might as well admit, Jane, we do. Mm, I think that by now nearly all the stars do who appear on Family Theater. And while there's no commercial sponsor, as you say, there's a sense in which every mother and father in this country is the sponsor of this program because every parent is responsible for making the home happy and wholesome and good. A place where, well, a place where God is revered and loved. Well, I, I couldn't have said that better myself, Jane. Well, I'm sorry if I got all wound up. <laughs> oh, don't apologize. It's very commendable. So again, in behalf of Family Theater, our deep gratitude to you, Jane, all of our supporters and benefactors and listeners. And we hope everyone will take to heart the great weekly message and slogan of Family Theater, that the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you The Fledgling, starring Jane Powell. J. Carol Nash was your host. Others in our cast were Gene Bates, Howard Culver, Jack Crucian, and Curly Bradley. The script was written by John T. Kelly, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed for Family Theater by Joseph F. Mansfield. This is Tony Lafrano expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home, and inviting you to join us next week when Family Theater will present The People's Choice, starring Gene Lockhart. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.